So that is how you can differentiate saturated solution and unsaturated solutions. Now how can you increase the rate of dissolving of solute in the solvent in a solution? Do you have any factors which, which are influencing the rate of dissolving? Yes, we have. So let us discuss about factors influencing or affecting also we can say influencing rate of dissolve. Dissolving or dissolve. Now to test these factors, let me explain an example. Take three containers or three test tubes filled with water, equal amount of water. Equal amount of water. Now in this you added some salt. So all these are water plus salt solution. Now what you have done is the first one, second one, third one. First one you have kept like that only. It is undisturbed state for some time. Now this is you have taken a glass, thin glass rod and you stir it. This is undisturbed, first one is undisturbed, second one is stirred. with the glass rod. The third one is a third one is applied heat. Heat. Heat is applied. It's an iron mesh which is directly can't expose the burn Bunsen burner flame to the test tube. So you have to keep the test tube on the iron mesh. So three cases if you study for some time, then what will happen? You will understand that in the third case, the mixing is fast comparing to the second and first. So if you come in, in the order, we can say the dissolving is quicker when the heat is applied and then stirring and then undisturbed. So the dissolving is faster than third and after third little slower in stirring and very much slower in first case undisturbed state but of, but of course on all three cases the dissolve is possible but depends upon the method what you are using. So the rate of dissolving you know, depends upon the temperature, heat supply means increase the temperature of it, rate of dissolving depends upon the stirring, rate of dissolving depends upon the size of the solute substances. Of course if you take salt crystals and drop into the water. Even though you stir with the glass rod, you can't say that you can uh, get the solution in a short period of time comparing to very small crystals of salt mixed with the water. So the factors influence the first one is temperature, the second one is stirring, stirring, the third one is size of particles, size of particles of solute. In that way, these factors will affect the rate of dissolving. We know that what is concentration solution and what is dilute solution. But how would we calculate or I can measure the amount of concentration in a solution? So for this we have a mathematical formula. You know that Whenever you want to work with numbers, want to compare, want to measure, you should depend upon mathematical formula. And here we have a mathematical formula to find a concentration percentage of a solution. Right. So to find concentration percentage, of a solute in a solution. The concentration of a solution means actually we are finding the concentration of a solute in a solution. Like 
salt water i want to know what is the concentration concentration of salt in the water sugar water i want to know the concentration of sugar in the water so the formula is we have we have two formulas one formula mass of solute by mass of solution in 200 next mass of solute by volume of solution into 100 like we have we can have two formulas here okay so we know uh, we understand about the formula now let's do a numerical based on the formula there is salt sol salt water solution very how salt 50 grams and water 250 grams now i want the concentration of salt in the salt water solution then we know the formula mass of solute by mass of solution into 100 so mass of solute yes solute is salt so it is 50 grams by mass of solution you can't say 250 solution means combination of solute and solvent so 50 plus 250 300 into 100 what happens gram gram is cancelled two zeros two zeros cancelled now it is 50% so the salt has 50% in that solution so mass of the solute is 50 grams by mass of the solution mass of the solution means combination of solute and solvent 50 plus 250 300 grams in 200 so gram gram is cancelled two zeros two zeros cancelled we left with 50 by 3 now you simplify it 3 one jar 3 5 3 5 3 220 the 6 jar 18 20 18 20 so 16.67 so approximately the 16.67 percentage is the percentage of the salt how do you find different components in heterogeneous mixture homogeneous mixture we understand heterogeneous mixture we understand we are coming to heterogeneous heterogeneous you know that you have different components but they are not completely dissolved completely not uniformly distributed throughout the solution those are called heterogeneous solutions so how do we find those components or do we have any special names for those components in heterogeneous solutions yes so in hetero genius solutions basically you have two types of uh, components i can say two types of things comes under components we know that the heterogeneous solutions or heterogeneous mixtures where all the components are not uniformly distributed in heterogeneous mixtures you should know about two things one is suspensions other is collides what are the suspensions and collides let me explain explain this two based on small example now you can take a container have water in it now take chalk powder it's called chalk powder chalk powder drop into the water now another case take again the same container and same amount of water and drop milk drops these are called milk drops drop milk drops into the water so this is also water this is also water 
Now what happens? Let me explain about this activity first. So the chalk powder added to the water and wait for some time. Now what you observe? You observe a precipitate, a residual chalk powder like a paste type you can see at the bottom of the container. And that precipitate residual is called suspensions. That means generally some components in the heterogeneous mixture completely won't dissolve as we discussed. So they will, when they don't dissolve, they will be settled down at the bottom of the container. And in this case, the chalk powder become a paste and settled down at the bottom of the container. It's called suspension. Now, in the suspension, you have a special category called emulsions. Emulsions means, take example of a container having water and kerosene, over it kerosene. This is kerosene. Then what happens? Kerosene could not dissolve in the water. Still, it is a solution. It is called heterogeneous solution. So, here what happened? As this kerosene is not dissolved in the water, it is forming, it is stays on the layers of the water surface. This is called emulsion. Like kerosene plus water, where kerosene form layers on the layers of the water. And another example, oil plus water. Oil also cannot be dissolved in the water. It will stay on the surface of the water. So all this comes under emulsions. Now, take this example where the water is mixed with the milk. And we say that uh, this is the milk plus water is called milk water. And it is a homogeneous solution. My dear friends, it is, seems to be homogeneous solutions. But if you see the microscope, you can see the tiny size of milk particles. With your naked eye, you are unable to observe those milk particles. But the microscope, you can observe that. That means, this milk is not exactly mixing uniformly with the water. And these milk particles are called colloids. We have some more examples in our real life for colloids. Like, you can say milk can say, uh, what do you call it, cream, good polish and clouds, etc. All this comes under the example of colloids. So, they seem to be mixed with the solvent with our naked eye physically, but actually they are not mixing those particles you can see inside the solution if you, if you use a microscope. Of course, if you send the light through it, these particles scatter all the lights through this. Here, collides we understand that there seems to be homogeneous solutions, but not actual homogeneous. Those particles are existing in the solution. With the microscope, you can see those particles. In these colloids, again you have two stages. One is colloidal phase, the second one is colloidal medium. So what is colloidal phase? In colloidal phase, all the particles, colloidal particles which are smaller in size and which are very less in composition exist in the solution. So, these very small, all particles, the colloidal particles, smaller in size with less, less composition in the mixture. Now, what is colloidal medium? So, medium. In this medium, you can see many number of colloidal particles which will disperse the light when it passing through it. This is what colloidal medium. So, we have learned about what are suspensions, what are colloids. Now, I am going to tell you the natural effect which was discovered by a scientist called Tyndall. T-Y-N-D-A-L-L. 
D A L L Tyndall and uh, that is called Tyndall effect. What is Tyndall effect? Suppose think that you are in a room and the room is closed with all the doors except a small window is opened such a manner that the opening is very narrow like a slit type so that sun rays can pass through that narrow opening then what what you observe you observe that that light is diffracted scattered in uh, through that narrow and it can go in different different directions in your room that is the Tyndall effect give me another example in the kitchen suppose the smoke is coming from your gas stove you're boiling water you're doing some um, you're preparing some food and the smoke is coming out and the smoke is exposed to sunlight so how do you observe how the light scattered in all the direction that is the Tyndall effect another beautiful example suppose if you go to a dense forest dense forest in the forest are having huge number of trees and at the sunrise time if you see the sunrise are falling through the trees and through the tree leaves and branches coming in into the forest now how the light is scattered in different different directions and how the light is scattered through mist in different different directions is what called Tyndall effect so the Tyndall effect giving a representation of how the light is scattered through colloidal particles in the heterogeneous solution now we can see the properties of solutions and collides the left side I have written solutions properties of suspensions the right side written properties of collides and if you observe them you can't see much difference between them instead of that you can see um, many properties which are matching the first property heterogeneous mixture yes suspension is heterogeneous mixture collides also heterogeneous mixtures the second property Particles can be seen with the naked eye. Yes, in suspensions, I told when the chalk powder kept inside the water, after some time, you can see the chalk powder and chalk particle powder particles. But in collides, particles are too small to be seen with the naked eye. It is possible using microscope. Third property, scatters beam of light. Yes, if you send the light using torch light or using laser light and light passes through this particles and scatters when light goes in different directions you can see the beam of light through that substance here also same thing happens the fourth point settle down when kept undisturbed what settle down solute when you take the case of chalk powder and water chalk powder solute solute will be settled down when not disturbed but here if we don't disturb they do not settle down there's the main difference between both of them Remaining of same. 